What is up, what is up, what is up FS Club? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the Precision Farming Tutorial Episode 2. So if you have not seen the first episode, make sure you guys go back and watch that. But anyways, we're on part two on this one. We're going to be taking more of a look on seeding. So, already of course done the soil sampling. We've done the liming, so the pH value as you see right down there is perfect. So the next thing we need to do is some seeding. So if we go over here, let's go to that help menu of course. Let's go down all the way down here, and there we go. So, where is it at? So, with the new Precision Farming, you get variable seed rates now. For some crops, the Precision Farming DLC has the option of adjust, adjusting the seed rate in different zones of your, each field. In some zones, you can reduce the seed rate while still maintaining the same yield level. So, you're actually going to be saving money right there. On the other hand, some areas may require a high seed rate to improve competitiveness against weeds and reach the full yield potential. Three seed rate options are available, low, standard, and high. Selecting an automatic seed rate option will always give the best seed rate for each part of the field. In this mode, the standard seed rate is used for sandy loam and the high, higher seed rate on loamy sand except for canola where high seed rates will reduce yield. The loam soil has the highest fertility and yield potential and so the lower seed rate is better while silty clay is a challenging soil type and a higher seed rate will compensate for lower emergence and poor seed bed conditions. So that means you kind of want to go for that loam soil and kind of stay away, stay away from that silty clay. Uh, the crops for each variable seed rate is available and the optimum seed rates for soil types are shown in the table below. While seeding in manual mode, the small bars below the circle indicate which of the three possible seed rates would be optimal for the current soil type. So if you're doing wheat, barley, canola, oat, corn, sunflowers, or soybeans, you see all the chart right there. So if you're doing like loam right there, you're actually going to be, everything's going to be low. So you're going to be saving a lot of seeds right there. But if you're going to be using like say loamy sand or silty clay, pretty much everything is going to be high except for canola. Canola would just be standard. So if we look at the field we have right here, what do we have? Let's go up to the precision tab. And there we go right there. So we have loam right over here. And then sandy loam over here. So the good thing is, is none of these, none of this field right here has silty clay. It's all loam or sandy loam. So let's go back over to that help menu right there. So loam or sandy loam. So that's, we actually have a pretty decent sized field besides the loamy sand part, which is going to be going into high. But we are in April, so the only thing we can really actually plant is canola. So it's pretty much either going to be standard or it's going to be low. All right, we have our, of course, our fence right here, and we have a direct seeder. Remember, using direct seeding or using shallow cultivation will be beneficial if you're trying to get that economic score all the way up. See, right now I have it at 57. You can see the bars right down there. One of them is completely up. So if you're going to be plowing, it is not going to be good. Uh, the reason why we're trying to get that all the way up, if you look under here right here, I said here right here, geez. But anyways, it says that the Precision Farming DLC also gives you an environmental score to indicate whether you are growing your crops in an environmentally friendly and sustainable way. There is a total score for your farm across all your fields, and you can also obtain the score for each field. Scores are shown in the Precision Farming menu. Uh, this score directly affects crops, uh, crop value in the game. The maximum score of 100 will increase the price you get for your crop by 15%. So that is pretty, that is pretty big right there. Wow. Okay. So there's that. Let me actually go real quick over here. How do you get this whole area? I don't know how to get the whole area. Okay, that's 57. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. The right there, 58 environmental score. So currently, no soil samples are sent off. But if you click on these, see on those other ones, it shows that uh, already uh, pH levels are good. I've not done those other fields, so I don't know. Oh, also something else I did notice. If you need some help, when you're on this screen, just push that menu button right there and it takes you right here. So that is something very helpful. Okay, but anyways, we're messing with the variable seed rate. So let's get in here. You're going to see a new menu popping up over on the left top side. You see, as you see right there, it says variable seed rate, auto, zero seeds, M2, and then, of course, the seeds. Uh, so let me open this up real quick. So if I hold down LB, it just shows, uh, let's put that at canola. So that's at canola. 
Uh, just trying to check something out real quick. Not available for oil seed or grass. Okay, so canola, unload, and changing driving direction. Okay, so we're going to turn the engine on. We're going to open that up. Okay, can you actually change? I thought you could change that. Maybe you can't. Okay, so let's go ahead and op uh, lower that down. And we're going to start. And you see it says right down there, 35 seeds M2. Because we're on medium. Uh, let's see, open cover, turn off cedar. Yeah, I don't see anything else to like change, change it from auto. So I might be mistaken. But if we go over here, as you see, once we hit that different kind of soil, like the seeds, well, see right there, just change to 35 seeds into instead of the, what was it, like 52? So we're going to go ahead and do this whole field really quick. Okay, so we're about done. See, it looks really good. And look how much seeds we've actually used. Uh, so we're done with that. We used 70 liters of seeds. That's not bad. It is a small field, but yeah, that's not bad at all. Okay, let's go ahead and return this. Okay, let me turn that off too. All right, there we go. Okay, so if we go over here now, it says our nitrogen is bad because, you know, now it finally can detect your crop. So we're going to have to uh, put some uh, put some nitrogen on it. And it even tells you your expected yield. See right there? 74%, 2.6 uh, hectare acre. Yield potential is at 100% right now. Ooh, 125. Okay. I guess we must be sitting in the middle of the soil. All right. So the next step is probably to be putting some fertilizer down on it. Also, let me go over here real quick. Let's go into here. Let's go to pH level. You see the pH level is really good. It even tells you about how much we've spent. So if we click on this right there, there we go. So yeah, 52 liters. That's how much we've spent. Wow. I must actually accidentally reset that, but yeah. Okay, nitrogen is really bad. Uh, yield, seed rate, see right there, standard, and then a low on that one. Okay. And we're at 58 on all that. So, let's go right over here. If you go under environmental score, you can see right down there, it says that the tillage. Tillage also affects your environmental score. Deep tillage, like plowing, burns a lot of fuel. Bring, uh, brings seed, uh, weed seeds near the soil surface and makes the soil susceptible to erosion. So plowing attracts zero points. Shallow tillage with the incorporation of crop residues save fuel. Reduces ero erosion and is awarded with five points. So that awarded us with five points. Minimum tillage and direct seeding gives you the maximum of 10 points. Oh, okay. So we probably got 10 points. So that is definitely going to help right there. All right, so we got 15 for, of course, soil sampling. We got 10 for that, so that should add an extra 25. Weed control should get us 30. Uh, pH values will give us 15. And nitrogen, the maximum score of nitrogen will be 30. Okay, let's see. The score will change depending on the fertilization. The maximum score 30 will only be reached if you use the manure sensor for organic fertilization and the crop sensor for the min mineral fertilizer application. Over fertilization will decrease the score because the excessive nitrogen will be washed out and can pollute the groundwater. 
Under fertilization also decreases the score because you won't reach the full yield potential so that the crop takes a less CO2 out of the atmosphere. The nitrogen score will only be updated after the harvest. Okay. So we're, we're going to be pretty much doing organic, I mean, mineral fertilization. So that means we need a crop sensor. Let's actually go over to here. Uh, next to the pH map, you'll find the nitrogen map. This indicates the current level of nitrogen in the ground. The optimal level of nitrogen depends on the planted crop and the soil type. By walking on the field and having a look at the field display, info display, you can see the current and target nitrogen levels of the specific spot on the field. Uh, the nitrogen level can be increased by applying, applying either fertilizer or manure. Slurry manure will increase the nitrogen level by a fixed value depending on the soil type. It is recommended to do this before preparing the uh, field for the next sowing. Mineral and liquid fertilization adds, adjusts the nitrogen level automatically to the crop requirement. If the crop is already planted, this should be done within the first growth states after sowing the crop. It's always possible to control the application rate manually. All right. So there we go right there. Uh, there's weed control, manure nitrogen system, cross sensors. Okay, this is something we need to go over too. Crop sensor for nitrogen fertilization. The biomass and the nutrient content of crops varies across each field and also seasonally. For optimal and sustainable nitrogen fertilization, you can purchase a sensor to measure the crop's actual nitrogen needs in real time during the application of the fertilizer. The associated software then calculates the amount of additional nitrogen needed to release the crop's yield potential. Depending on that adjusted nitrogen map, the fertilizer spreaders will then automatically apply the correct value. If you don't use the crop sensor, your yield will be lower in some parts of the field. Using a crop sensor also helps you to reach the highest nitrogen score in your environmental score. Two sensors are available. One is active, the Isura Pro Active, and one is passive, the Isura Pro Compact. The active sensor is mounted in front as it on the screenshot. Uh, it has a pulsing light source and can be used day or night. The passive sensor is mounted on the cab mirrors and requires daylight to function. Uh, the sensors can only be used when the crop has enough green leaves for the sensor to detect differences. For cereals, the best time to use a sensor is the mineral fertilizer application in spring. Uh, the Pro Compact is available in the shop as a configuration for all tractors. Okay, so what I'm trying to figure out, okay. I believe it's been so it's been a while since I've done uh, precision farming. I believe you only need to fertilize it once. So what I think it's telling me right here is that the best time to actually fertilize instead of, you know, right after planting is going to be like when you're actually starting to get those green leaves up. So that means I need to wait till probably like September or October to actually start the fertilization. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so it is September and we have a problem if you guys couldn't tell. Our field's got some weeds on it, so we're gonna take care of the weeds before we do anything else. Okay, as you see, also our nitrogen level is bad. Actually, uh, we fast forwarded a little bit and all that stuff started actually updating, so that's what I would suggest as soon as you get done doing all this, up, I mean, go a little bit and it should update. See, as you see right there, expected yield is 82 and yield potential is 120, uh, 20, 25, so. That is what we can get, either 2.9 or 4.4. We really want to get that 4.4. All right, so what we are going to be doing is spot spraying probably. But let's go over to here. Let's go under weed control via spot spraying. So with the Precision Farming DLC, the weed distribution on your field changes. Weeds may appear in bigger or smaller patches. As weeds do not grow all over your field, you can save money on herbicide and increase your environmental score by only spraying where your sprayer sees the weeds. To do this, you must purchase a sprayer with the option for spot spraying. This ensures that each nozzle of the sprayer will only turn on while there are actual weeds below the nozzle. With that, you may use up to 90% less herbicide, reducing cost and protecting the environment. The DLC adds the John Deere R732i power spray sprayer, which includes the C and spray configuration for spot spraying. C and spray is the latest technology in precision farming technology using machine vision and artificial intelligence. Cameras are located on the spray boom and the machine vision software distinguishes between crop and weed plants. If enough weeds are detected, the nozzle opens and herbicide is applied. So we're also going to take a look at the weeds in the environmental score and how it impacts actually environmental score. Because, you know, we want that 15 plus on the yield. Oh, yeah. But anyways, weed control full full score is 30 is reached while using the spot spray technology. So that is a huge score right there. 
Uh, with that, you perfectly control your weeds with the minimum usage of herbicides and reach the optimal yield. You can also collect points for mechanical weed control, but the score is lower, 20. So it is very beneficial if you actually just do the spot spraying uh, because this leads to soil degradation, uh, compaction, erosion, new weed germination, loss of soil mo moisture, and higher fuel usage. 15 points are collected when you spray the whole field, which leads to the full yield, but without herbicide reduction. If you can't control your weeds at all, you get the lowest score, 10, because this has uh, a very negative impact on yield and increases the long-term weed pressure. This is not helpful to feed the growing world population. All right, so let's go into the store real quick. Uh, let's go right over here. So if we go to sprayers, does, does these sprayers all have it? No, that does not have it. That does not have it. I like that tank, by the way. Um, this doesn't have it. So is it only just the one that has it? I think so. Narrows, narrows. Yeah, I think it's the only the power spray which has it. Yeah, the scene spray. So you're definitely going to have to use this. So if you turn that on, it is an extra $39,000. Ouch. Uh, but anyways, this thing holds up to 3,360 liters. 3.8 tons, a working width of 28 meters, 7 miles an hour's operating speed is 91,500. Uh, with this configuration, each nozzle sprayer will only turn on while there are actual weeds below the nozzle. With that, you may use 90% less herbicide, reducing cost and protecting the environment. Uh, this also looks like it takes regular fertilizer too, so let's put some narrow tires on it and let's go ahead and get this. Now I need to get a thing of herbicide which is right here okay so we got that let's go ahead and get in our fence okay so let's go ahead and hook this up really quick Ooh, i do like it though look at that it's nice to have a john deere sprayer in the game okay so let's go ahead and hook that up okay uh let's fill it up okay it says change nitrogen reference value hmm. I don't know what that is. Unload. Okay. Oh, that's probably the uh, if we had ni if we had nitrogen in here, but we're using, of course, herbicide. Which this thing's probably gonna take like one minute to even get this thing done because this field is small. But I do like this. Look at that. Wow. Even has a beacon in the back. Okay, so let's go over here and let's get rid of some weeds. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. You can actually raise it if you want to. So it is on, but as you see, nothing is coming on. So just run across it. Oh, look at that. That is so cool. Okay, hold on. I got I got to get a thumbnail for this, okay? Okay, a screenshot has been taken. Let's go right over here real quick. Did you see how fast this actually Yeah. Now let's go right over here. Got to make sure we get all of it too. Uh like I probably back up. I missed that little bit of one right over here. Okay, let's go ahead and roll around here. Yeah, you see like like the, how they're different patches now? The whole field is not just all covered in it. And the good thing is this only does spot spraying. Now the question is, is whenever this thing starts, you know, growing a little bit higher, will the will the weeds come back? Or are we gonna be good? I hope hopefully we're good. But I do like this spot spraying though. See look, I barely have used anything. It's what, used maybe about twenty five liters, that's about it. Let's go ahead and get this last pass right here, and then we can try to figure out how to do the nitrogen in the next episode. So this one was pretty much, I thought this was going to be about nitrogen, but it is actually going to be about weed control. And what else do we do? Weed control? Oh, and seeding. Sorry, I couldn't even think there for a second. Okay, right, so the weeds are done. So there we go. Let's go ahead and fold that back up. Let's see, we used 25 liters. Wow. That is crazy. All right, so if we go to 
here. Now it says our score is 73. Okay, so let's see. Nitrogen yield, seed rate, soil types. Okay, environmental score is 74. So two, two of those things are up. Let me actually go just a little bit because I just want to see if it changes or anything like that. Now, you know what? Let's actually go to the next day to see what happens. Okay, so here we go. If we go right to the field, as you see, the weeds are still all dead. There is no weeds on here. We do need to get that nitrogen level up, which we'll be doing in a little bit. Expected yield is at 82% and the yield potential is still at 125. So in the next episode, which will be tomorrow, if you're watching this, whenever I post this, we will be going over the nitrogen level and probably looking at our yields. But anyways, if we go over to, let's see, go over to click on this right there. It shows all the prices of the seed, the herbicide, how much fuel we used, vehicle maintenance and all that. That's probably one of the best things about this. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Remember, if you guys did like the video, make sure to pound that like button. If you haven't subbed, make sure you guys do. Like always, have a nice day, farmers. Peace.